Hi, I'm Alex McColgan and you're watching Astrum. Hubble has released a zip file on their website containing the top 100 pictures Hubble has ever taken. What I'll do over the course of this series is go through these pictures one by one and explain what it is you're looking at. And believe me, some of these pictures require an explanation. Episode 3. We're making good progress now, but I'm going to have to do something a little bit unusual for this series. Number 21. The Carina Nebula. It hardly needs to be said, but this is a gorgeous image. It looks to me like an artist has flick painted a canvas in a spectacular way. But incredibly, the colours and shapes we see are actually representative of something real. Now hold on to your seats, because it's the only image we're going to look at today. There's simply too much to talk about, and I don't want to have to cut out any interesting details, which is good for me and for you. So to start off, where is it? The Carina Nebula is actually brighter and bigger at 200 light years across than the famous Orion Nebula we discussed in the previous episode, but it isn't as well known. This is because it's only visible from the southern hemisphere, meaning us up north won't be able to see it in the sky. It's found near the Carina constellation and is in the disk of the Milky Way galaxy. It's only 6,500 light years away from Earth yet can be seen with surprising clarity with a long exposure camera or a small telescope. What we're seeing in this image is like the other nebula we've seen so far, the effects of extremely hot, young, massive stars blasting away at the dust and gas of the nebula. This, as we know, encourages star formation, and this nebula has plenty of star forming regions. Just off this main image here is the most luminous star in the Milky Way. WR25. Thankfully it's easy to find because this dust structure, known as the finger of God, is pointing at it. It is staggering 6.3 million times more luminous than our Sun. It's part of a binary star system, but the two stars can't be distinguished in this image, we have to zoom in further to see them. The companion is thought to contribute about 15% to WR25's total luminosity. It is absolutely blasting away at this nebula. The finger and the surrounding globules are being evaporated into space, possibly even causing star formation there too. Even though it's reasonably close to us and is the brightest star in the galaxy, it can't actually be seen with the naked eye. There's too much dust and gas deflecting and absorbing its light. This image we're looking at included infrared data, which can see through dust and gas a lot easier than visible light. The colours of this image are significant too. Red represents sulphur, green is hydrogen, and blue is oxygen. This whole region of stars is the star cluster known as Trumpler 16. Also contained within this cluster is the massive and famous Eta Carina. Although not quite as bright as WR25, it's still over 4 million times more luminous than our Sun, and over 100 times more massive. It again is part of a binary star system, the other star making total luminosity over 5 million times that of the Sun. Now imagine the Sun, and then imagine it 5 million times brighter. If you're doing it right, what you should be doing is imagining instantly and spontaneously combusting. Let's see why. So this is a hypothetical but similar binary star system, and this is a hypothetical planet which is a little further away than what Neptune is to our Sun. Its surface temperature is 500 degrees centigrade. On Neptune, it's minus 200. The Sun looks tiny in comparison, and Neptune really is this dim. So Eta Carina is pretty impressive then. It is a luminous blue variable star, meaning its brightness is changing over time. Only 150 years ago, it was the second brightest star in our sky, before fading to below naked eye visibility. The reason for this is because the star almost went supernova. This image of the star is the most detailed and highest resolution of an extended object ever captured by Hubble. Structures only 10 billion kilometers across can be seen with surprising clarity. What we're looking at here is the ejected mass of the star when it brightened 150 years ago. 
it actually got as bright as a supernova explosion, but it somehow survived. During the explosion though, it did release mass in the form of two polar lobes and an equatorial disk, all moving outward at a speed of 2 million kilometers an hour. Since the explosion 150 years ago, it has increased in brightness and is now comfortably visible to the naked eye. Chances are it will still go supernova as it really is at the end of its life and could do so at any moment. Now, there are three possibilities of the fate of this star. First is it could go supernova in a typical manner where its core collapses and it would temporarily appear as bright as Venus in the sky. It could also go hypernova potentially being the brightest supernova in recorded history, and a long duration gamma ray burst would knock out all of the satellites in our space. Although we humans with our feet firmly on Earth would be protected by the atmosphere. The last and most unlikely possibility is that it collapses into a black hole. Now fun slash horrifying fact, if it did that, and one of Eta Carina's polar axis was aimed at Earth, Collapsing into a black hole would likely give off a gamma ray burst, which would strike the Earth's atmosphere. This would be the equivalent to one kiloton of TNT per square kilometer over the entire hemisphere facing the star, effectively meaning the end of the world. Don't worry though, its axis isn't currently facing us and it's not really expected to give off a gamma ray burst, but it is food for thought nonetheless. Near Eta Carina is the Keyhole Nebula, a structure of dark, cool gas and dust, and also bright, fluorescent gas. Eta Carina has a big effect on the nebula, ionizing gas and pushing against the surrounding dust. These bubbles and lines you see are due to the effects of this star. Also in the Carina Nebula is the famous Mystic Mountain, which you've probably seen before and it is an image we'll discuss later in this series. To me though, it looks more like a man with a wizard's hat going on a leisurely stroll, but maybe that's just me. The last thing we'll look at today is Trumpler 14, the other big star cluster in this image. It's one of the youngest known clusters and it contains about 2,000 stars. They are thought to be only 300 to 500,000 years old, which is very young for astronomical standards. They're extremely hot and will only be short-lived. They will likely dissipate in the next few hundred million years, so enjoy them while you can. Well, thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments. I thought it was better to do a whole video on this nebula rather than trying to rush squeezing nine other images into this episode. Something else I'd like to draw your attention to is my social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. I also have a Patreon page if you feel like you'd like to donate towards any future projects. I'm really happy as well as my channel has broken through half a million views, which is a crazy number that I can't really comprehend. So thanks so much for your support and sticking with me this far. I'm also working on Uranus video which is surprisingly interesting for me, so get ready for that. So I will see you in the not too distant future, and hopefully for both of us I'm not talking about that in astronomical terms.